Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I feel like it's been a long time since I've done like a sit down chit chat video. The last one I did was my wrap and chat video, which was kind of like a Q and A. Um, I do enjoy doing monthly series on my channel. For a couple of years, I did a goals series where I shared my goals each month. Last year, I tried to do a monthly meal planning series, which for the most part happened every month. Um, and this year I wanna do like a coffee and catch up type of series. I have really been wanting to put together like a tea talk type of um, video, my dog is sitting right next to me, um, where I just kind of talk about a bunch of different topics, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Um, and so I asked on Instagram around October what type of topics you guys would want to see, and I got some similar responses, faith-based topics, um, what I'm reading, fun finds, recipes, things like that. So if you guys have a a topic you would like me to include in this little series each month let me know i also need your guys's help naming this series i was thinking about calling it like coffee and ketchup or something like or catch up with coffee because ketchup it sounds like ketchup but catch up with coffee coffee chat tea talk whatever um but let me know your ideas down below because i literally have no idea and I don't have coffee today because I've already had two today and I can't have any more. So don't have a coffee right now. Um, but I do have a list of topics to kind of chat about. I just thought it'd be fun to kind of chat like girlfriends, uh, share what's going on in my life, things I'm interested in, uh, fun things, like I said, fun purchases, homemaking topics, what I'm working on, uh, just a little something you don't necessarily have to watch. You can kind of just listen to like you were... Um, chatting with a girlfriend so i'm gonna go ahead and get started on this list but like i said let me know if there's any topics you'd like to be a part of this recurring series and if you have a name for it i need you guys to name it for me i'm just not i'm not as creative as i'd wish okay let's get started So first things first, uh, well, I guess super first things first, if you are new here, welcome to my channel. My name's Abby. I am a homeschooling mom of five. My kids are seven, almost eight months old, um, all the way through 13, almost 14 in just a few weeks, which is so sad, but happy. Um, she's such, she's a, at such a fun age, so I really can't say it's too sad. It's bittersweet. We'll go with that. Um, and I've got three girls and two boys and I share just homemaking, homeschooling, lifestyle stuff here on YouTube. So uh, yeah, like I said, I've got this series in mind. We're gonna work our way through this first one, but I hope it kind of comes together more as the months go on. So the first topic that I'd like to talk about is, let's talk homeschool right off the bat, like some homeschool highlights from the last month. So. Uh, some of the things that I really enjoyed last month in our homeschool. Now we took like a six week break. Um, and so we were just getting back started a couple weeks ago. So we kind of worked through the bones of our homeschool that first week and then started adding in more of our enrichment stuff after. I just knew it was gonna take a while to get back into routine. Um, some of my favorite things, we did a Robert Frost five in a row unit. We did stopping by woods on a snowy evening. And my older kids are doing a Robert Frost unit with redefining schools. So we did a Robert Frost poetry tea time. Um, and that was really fun. So that was something I definitely enjoyed. Uh, it was my month to host our little geography group. And so the person whose turn it was to pick, it was a girl from another family. She chose Greece, so I had to do a little Greece. Um, day here so we did some learning about Greece we had a little Greek food that was a really fun thing that we enjoyed this month we started our Shakespeare unit for the year so I tend to do that second semester so we started Shakespeare and I'm having Annie sit in but she's not necessarily involved although she's quite enjoying it so far um, so we're doing that just once a week right now just 20 minutes um, once a week and that went really well. My kids really enjoy Shakespeare. Uh, we use the Simply Charlotte Mason Shakespeare in Three Steps series. So yeah, those are kind of the highlights of this month for me. Um, 
my favorite things that happened in our homeschool this month. There are quite a few things I'm looking forward to, especially now that we're in a good groove, but our morning time's gone really well getting back into routine. I kind of put my focus on that morning time, so that's gone really well. Um, yeah, so we're enjoying we're enjoying homeschool. We're back in the swing of things and we're really enjoying it after an extended break. Kind of sticking to the school theme, I'll share what I'm reading right now. So I'm making my way through In Vital Harmony by Karen Glass. Karen Glass wrote Know and Tell, which I love and recommend and may reread here soon as we get toward the summer uh, just to prep for next year. So you might see it pop up here on this video again. But um, this goes, so Charlotte Mason looked at the world and saw that it was governed by universal natural law, such as the law of gravity. Then she wondered, what if there were similar laws that governed the way people learn? If we knew what those laws were, we'd be able to pursue education along the most promising lines. So this one, um, let's see. These principles are for everyone concerned with teaching and learning. They are no more difficult to understand and implement than the principle of gravity, which allows you to walk, run, and even when you know what you are doing to soar. So I believe it's 20 principles that this goes through, but if you are familiar with the Charlotte Mason method, this is a great one to add in. And I am kind of lightly following along with a book club. I'm not able to be super committed to it right now, but I am at least reading the posts every couple of days and seeing what people have to say about it. I just am not able to super regularly participate in it, but it's what sparked my interest in reading. This book was an online book club. The other thing I'm revisiting is just this professionalizing motherhood. I've been having a little trouble getting up and going again after having the baby with, uh, having a very good routine, like system routine as far as my household goes. And maybe I do have a good one, but it doesn't feel like I do. And so I like this book. Um, I read it years ago. And so I just decided, you know what? I think I read this like three kids ago. So now that I have a larger family, I'm gonna read this book again and see if anything sticks out to me, especially since it's been so long since I've had a lot of little kids in the house. I feel like my older kids, um, I've been in kind of an older kid season and now having the baby around again and just kind of makes me think about revisiting some topics that I haven't given much attention to for a while. Um, speaking of, the next thing I'll talk about is uh, maybe some goals. So I have homemaking goals and personal goals right now. Um, this last month, uh, I thought I would maybe share what my goals are are each month and then kind of revisit what my goal was the month prior. So in the month of January, uh, my homemaking goal was just to catch up on laundry, um, but not in just like a do the laundry way, more in like a go through closets, rework, you know, everyone's drawers and, you know, hang up clothes and do donations and all that jazz and then if I need to create a new laundry system to do so. So I just feel like that annual purge of the things that don't fit anyone or uh, just reorganization is super helpful. So it did take me almost the whole month to kind of do that, go through everyone's closets. I bought new hangers, I'll link them down below. I love these, they're like these velvet hangers and they even have them in little baby size actually. They're so cute, right? This little baby size. So I got this rose gold hanger with this little velvet, um, hanger that uh, I got for everyone's closets and it just took me the whole month to get rid of all of our old hangers, put these new hangers in, go through everyone's hang up clothes. Everyone's closets feel so much lighter and more fresh right now. We do live in Florida, I should add that in. Um, so we have the same wardrobe year round so I don't have to worry about coats and all that. Um, and so yeah, that was really refreshing and I just feel like I just, stayed in that lane. So if I ever felt overwhelmed by the house, I'm like, okay, but first start with the laundry. First start with the laundry. And then if I ever wasn't sure what to do, it was like, start with the laundry. So I really focused on the laundry last month and just kind of getting back into a good rhythm with that. And I just, post holiday too, it can just be so hard. And then we went away for a couple of weeks. I just felt so out of sorts when we got back home. I'm like, okay, it's not Christmas anymore. We're home from a couple of weeks out of town. Like I need a restart. So I started with laundry. Um, my next homemaking goal for the month of February is to work on keeping, prioritizing keeping my own bedroom clean. I mean, I pick it up, but it just turns into 
book piles and laundry piles that never get put away and then the baby's changing table gets covered in stuff and um, so as far as it getting to the point of picking up to where I'm mopping it as often as I mop the rest of my house, that's the problem. So my current goal is to have my room tidied enough so that every Friday when I mop my house, my room gets mopped too. So it's a very specific goal. Um, cause if I just say, oh, my goal is picking up my room, then there's always a reason why like, you know, I can justify like, well, that pile needs to be there for this or that. But if my goal is pick it up to the point where I can like mop every corner on Fridays, then I know that that's like very specific. So uh, right now it's been deep cleaned, it's been organized, it's been mopped, it was mopped this weekend and it's so refreshing. So I'm sticking with that through the month of February. That's my goal. So continuing with the laundry and focusing on keeping my room clean to the point of mopping it very well. Um, and then my other goal is like personal goal. So uh, my personal goal in January, which I feel like is always a really good goal to start with at the beginning of the year is to just get dressed and get ready every day. And so I invested in just a couple of little details that help me feel put together on days where I don't have time to do my hair or, you know, we're going to be too busy for me to feel like I should wear a nicer outfit. Maybe it's like a t-shirt and um, slacks kind of a day. Um, but I got some headbands and hair clips that still make me feel put together. I just kind of focused in again on making sure I'm at least taking care of my skincare, even if it's not a makeup type of a day, which if I'm being honest, like I'm not so active to the point where I need to be wearing like athleisure every day. I really rarely have to do that. Even like on a day where we have co-op and we're outside for hours, I can still put together a nice top and skirt or a sundress or like a nice shorts and top outfit. I just feel like there's this um, like bum in me that just like wants to justify wearing yoga pants every day because I am mopping and scrubbing things and it's just easier. And, but what I really like to do is to get dressed first thing in the morning, do my hair and be able to consistently stay in that same outfit through the dance and karate and church nights and all of that. So I've really focused in on that um, and I feel like I have a good routine going with that. It's not perfect, my hair's not curled or flat ironed, my makeup's not done every single day, but I do feel like I found the good in between of like feeling put together and um, not being overly done up or looking like I'm still in my pajamas at the end of the day. Um, and so that was my personal goal last month. And that looks different for everyone. My personal goal this month is, um, to at least go on a walk every day. Um, the baby loves to go on walks right now. And when I do a little bit of a baby check-in later in this video, I'll share a little bit more, but the baby loves to go on walks and my fitness routine is just, I'm just in a season where I've had to accept that Mostly it's because I'm not getting great sleep right now, but my 5.30 in the morning workout that I have scheduled on my calendar is just not uh, happening frequently right now. To be honest with you, here, I'll, I'll, in case anyone needs to hear this, I'll be straight up honest with you. Um, over the last three weeks, I've had one workout in the morning because the timing worked out. My alarm goes off between 5 and 5.30 every morning, John, John and I both, and we have three days a week that we have set aside for working out. Now, I know people are gonna be like, well, why doesn't he take the baby for you? I mostly want him to work out in the morning if the baby is up or fussy or has been up quite a bit at night because his time is really limited because realistically, I can squeeze in opportunity more so during the day than he can. He runs a business, he leaves the house first thing in the morning and he's gone till dinner time and then he's tired. And so um, so, uh, so he was able for the most part to maintain his workouts. The baby's been having lots of late nights and keeping me up and I'm sure disrupting his sleep as well. So, But I've prioritized his workouts ahead of mine because I do have opportunity to go on a walk, do 10 minutes of weights, you know, do little things here and there throughout the day that he just doesn't have the opportunity for. And so, and I also, by the end of the day, don't mind jumping on the Peloton um, later in the evening where I'd prefer him to just have a chance to chill out at the end of the day because the mental load of running, he actually has a few businesses, so the mental load of that, I just know like I'm in more of a mental state to like have a chance to 
do something new at the end of the day kind of a thing. And so um, my goal, just taking baby steps here and being gracious with myself for the season that I'm in and also keeping myself from being frustrated by the season that I'm in is just to walk. I love going on runs. Um, I do enjoy going on walks as well and um, just kind of throwing in some other core work or um, upper body work or just a couple of lighter workouts like 20 minute full body workouts or Peloton rides or something maybe just twice a week. So, but first we're starting with at least prioritizing walks every day just for some movement. Um, and so it's a great time in Florida. It's beautiful weather right now. And so it's a great time to get going with that. Now I actually do have a run planned for tomorrow. So it's not just walking, but I do feel like my natural personality is to be very all or nothing. And so this has been a great thought for me um, to kind of help myself out of that box that I put myself in of having to like, oh, if I can't do my 30 minute Peloton ride and then my 30 minutes of weights, or if I can't do this five mile run and a quick little upper body workout, then I just I can't do anything basically is what happens. And so, um, so then if I can't do anything, I'll actually go weeks without working out because it wasn't a perfect workout. If I let myself off the hook and say this is a season where maybe 30 minute walks and a couple of lightweight days is what you have, then I'm much then I'm actually going to work out more than if I try to build these massive workouts. Does that make sense? And um, it also helps me when I am up with the baby or when you know I'm just feeling run down. That when that alarm goes off, it helps me to not feel stressed about. Um, just what I'm missing. I and mean, that's the thing I think that if I take away that like what I'm missing, then I don't feel overwhelmed. Um, I can kind of take life as it comes a little bit more. And so it also keeps me from feeling frustrated or being a victim of my circumstances, which are not terrible circumstances at all. Um, so I just think I, I shift into that victim mindset very quickly. And so changing my plan as far as working out right now is what I'm doing. And this is one time where I'm not gonna apologize for being long-winded because I knew that this video and I plan for this video each month to be a long-winded video, just kind of sharing everything I feel like sharing on each of these topics. So um, <clears throat> that's, that's where I'm at. I just, I know myself, I get frustrated. I wanna cry every time that I have a workout penciled in and I have to cross it out. Um, and so I told John recently, hey, Let's take my name off the calendar for workouts. Let's leave your name there for those three days a week. And I'm gonna play it out and see where I can fit my workouts in moving forward. Um, and then I'll put them back on the calendar. But right now, it can't be a hard you know, mark on the calendar because it's, then I just, then I have something to lose. Does that make sense? So that's where I'm at with that. Okay, next topic that I'm so excited about favorite finds. So I, you know, I like Amazon here and there. I like Target here and there. But um, this month, I think the favorite purchase that I made that I really want to share is a couple of darling outfits for Josephine. And this is really exciting because she is mostly hand-me-downs. And so um, each, uh, every few months when she outgrows a size, I go through our bins of clothes and wash things and put other things away. And it's mostly adorable outfits. And then I have the only thing that I need to buy to like fill in her outfits are pajamas. And this time when I was going through her six to nine month and then nine to 12 month size, she has mostly pajamas, like a whole drawer full of pajamas, basically. I don't know, all my friends who gave me things and then all the stuff I pulled out from Annie and even Bella um, were mostly pajamas. So I got to buy like the fun stuff this time. I could justify it a little bit. I'm like, oh, I can buy outfits this time because she mostly has pajamas. So I love smocked dresses and smocked bubbles and cute little Peter Pan collars. So I did a couple of orders that were noteworthy that I want to share with you. So the first order I did was from, uh, well, I'll do the smocked auctions first and then I'll share the shrimp and grits outfits because I got some things for Annabeth too, but oh, good gracious. I mean, I just, it's all so cute. So there is a website called Smocked Auctions that has uh, different outfits from a few different 
adorable companies. I love Mud Pie, um, Classic Whimsy. Uh, so this has uh, the best prices that I've seen on this stuff. Um, other than, well, no, not even like the Mud Pie stuff on Amazon is even more expensive than on Smocked Auctions. So first thing, this Seersucker little bubble romper. Oh, can you with the little ruffle butt? It's the cutest thing I've ever seen in my entire, well, no, it's not because there's one more dress that I think is the cutest, but oh my gosh, is that not darling? And then it's just so light, um, lightweight. And again, living in Florida from like March or April through November, it is swampy hot here and so it's just nice to have some lighter things and so i got her this uh it's called the multi-stripe seersucker side tie bubble so cute um so that's the first thing the next thing i got her was this little purple bishop dress this little smocked bishop so cute um the only thing that i was kind of bummed is that it doesn't have any bloomers so i just need to use just some white bloomers i guess for this so this one is super cute, just another little lightweight dress. These two sets are just adorable. So these little, um, these are both also from Classic Whimsy. These are both size nine months. So I love the mix match pattern of the little bloomers with the smocked top. And what I really like about things like this is this will fit her beyond the size of nine months and then the 12 month size stuff will fit her beyond that because just the way that these outfits tend to fit and then I just, can you deal with this? Look at the little sailboat, sailboat embroidery, the collar, but then the ribbon. This dress is so adorable. Love this. This is 12 months. I cannot wait to see her in this dress. Like, I mean, it's going to be a little bit before it fits her, but guys, so cute. So that's the first uh, order that I did. I also did a ruffle butts order for some swimwear for she and Annie, but um, it's not here yet. So add that to my favorite purchase of the month um, was the ruffle butts order. Just I kind of did all this in one day. I just filled in her wardrobe uh, six to nine months and nine to 12 months, kind of filled it in all the way through like October time. Um, my most favorite order though was from Shrimp and Grits. If you haven't been on the Shrimp and Grits website and you have a baby in your life, baby girls and baby boys, both, just don't go on the website. Don't do it. It's not good. <laughs> this is so cute. Everything's so cute. So the first thing is this little Easter bubble. Cute. I love little scalloped edges. They had a bloomer set too, but I went with the bubble because it's just so, so cute. And then to go with this, I got a matching sister dress for Annie. So sweet. I love it. I just love the detail. Um, then I got this, this little Tybee, um, romper it's stretchy oh she just woke up from her nap speaking of but this just looked so sweet and i see this i'm on the shrimp and grits buy sell trade group as well and i see people looking for this one all the time in different sizes and so i grabbed it because i'm like if people are looking for it in the next size up and the next size up then it must be very comfortable and it is it's super stretchy and and cute um Josie was born at almost the peak of the strawberry moon, um, under the strawberry moon that night. And so I think we're going to go with a berry first birthday theme this summer. And we always buy her little strawberry things, um, just because of that. And so, um, I got her this little strawberry romper and then it's another one that I got a matching one for, uh, Annie, Annie loves matching her sister. She loves being a big sister and the little buttons down the front of this. I just thought were adorable, but, but are you guys ready for this? I don't know if you are. I feel like I should insert a commercial break. Oh, this little lily pad dress. Look at this sweet embroidery. I can't handle it. Look how adorable the little ducks are. It's just so precious. Um, this is my favorite. I, when I saw it online, I was like, I think I'm obsessed with this, but I just wanted to get this one first and see what I thought in person. I'm totally going to go back and buy the bubble 
maybe not the smocked one but they have like a, a bubble that has this embroidery on it too it's so cute it's just so so cute so hands down my favorite purchase this or in the month of january and you know i doubt anything that i buy in february for any reason will be will top that so that is my favorite purchase in january i'm gonna pause this go grab my baby and then i'll come back and finish sharing my thoughts on some things i do have something um kind of faith-based that i really would like to share just something i feel like god's been teaching me and i've been walking through and struggling through um that i thought would make uh, good that this would make a good um a good moment to share like i don't think it would come up in any other vlog type video so uh let me go get the baby and i'll be back soon all right got the baby fed and she's playing now and i had to make myself a cup of tea because i wanted something but i have no more decaf coffee left so that was a huge bummer um so i guess that makes this officially a tea talk now i got some cinnamon apple spice tea here and we're gonna we're gonna finish chatting okay so let's see let's talk about should we talk about okay i kind of teased that i had a topic to talk about a faith-based topic so um yes what i'm learning about right now like i i have this um topic listed in this my notes like when i was brainstorming ideas of talking points for these monthly videos i just said faith-based or what i'm learning um and so you guys saw my video where I talked about my word for the year. And if you haven't seen that yet, I'll put it up here because it's really hard to um, go back. Like I can't do that. I can't do that quickly. I can't just like summarize that. But um, my word is dwell and all that kind of goes along with that. And so kind of where God has me with that right now. Um, my prayer has just been to you know, really abide in Christ to focus on being um, aware of his presence and carrying that into my day and then the place where my children dwell. And um, so I have, man, holy moly, I, you know, God has really, <laughs> there's like the phrase, like you've been taken to the woodshed. It's been nearly comical this month, just how much, like, I'm being totally honest, just, you know, be kind, but how much pride I've worked through this month and just really felt like I've needed to apologize for um, consistently to John, like, oh my gosh, like, he hasn't even, like, pointed anything out to me, but I have just been so aware in my, you know, asking the Lord to make me aware of things and to um, help me prioritize things. It's been mostly about prioritizing things. Like really I've been needing to just refocus on what my priorities are and being, like I said, like spiritually aware and just present. And so holy moly, I get in my own way so much. And so, um, I, you know, the joke that I've been telling John has been like, you know, people say God's taking you to the woodshed. I feel like he's taking me to the meat grinder. Like it's just been so like hard, um, but good to the point where I've had days this month where I just feel like I can't even say anything. Cause I'm like, what? Not in an unhealthy way, not in like a, turning into a recluse or being too hard on myself, but I've just been so hit with the consequences of my own you know, sin in my life that I have just been uh, really um, just kind of in this like posture of repentance. And I feel like I'm starting to kind of move forward now, now that I've been aware, been made aware of certain behaviors and attitudes that I've woken up with and carried into my day in all my relationships. Um, I do feel like I'm moving forward now in a, in a really good way. Um, but man, it was an interesting month. And I think the highlight of this month for me, and I shared a bit on Instagram, um, it just was kind of learning how to be still before the Lord, not even bring a prayer request, but just be still. Um, and being kind of just hit with things left and right in my own personal life taught me that and challenged me in that. Um, and I feel, 
as though I've just really learned how to uh, just practice being still. And so one night this month, uh, after just lots of disappointments and just kind of walking through disappointment and accepting you know, the discouraging things that were kind of happening and not trying to fix them because I think that's kind of part of that personality I was talking about, that um, pride in me is like, no, I'm gonna fix this or no, I can handle this. Um, trying to not take that attitude in to certain circumstances meant that I just kind of sat silent because I didn't know what to do or think or say and how to not have an emotional reaction. That was another big thing it was like, how do I not base my next word or phrase or thought or move based on my emotions. And so that's kind of why I just sat very still quite a bit um, silently where I questioned like, what do I even do in this situation? So uh, after a weekend where I just felt like really, like I was just constantly like, okay, Lord, I need your help. Okay, Lord, I need your help. Um, I felt like I had a really good Monday plan. I'm like, all right, we've got this, God. You have really helped me kind of simplify my day tomorrow, and this is gonna be for your glory. These are the things we're gonna focus on. I'm not gonna do, you know, things I wanna do. I feel like, you know, this is what's important. This is the, my priority. And then the baby was up the entire night because she's teething and she was sick. And so I put the sound machines on in the house and I came out into the living room so that everyone could stay asleep. And she was pretty loud. And I laid her on my chest and she would doze off here and there, but she was still moving around enough that I couldn't sleep. And so I was like, I'm not gonna look at my phone because my whole thing when I'm tired in the middle of the night is like, if I look at my phone and I see, oh, it's, I've lost another hour of sleep, I've lost another hour of sleep, then I get frustrated. And so my first defense in that situation, like when I when I know that I'm losing sleep is to just not look at my phone because I don't want to know the time. It makes it better if I just don't know. And um, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna pray. I'm just gonna pray. And then we're just gonna pray, God. We're just gonna talk this out because I'm stressing out right now and I'm feeling frustrated that my plans are gonna get ruined. And I had such a sweet time of prayer with the Lord all night long about everything, about every detail of my life, about what breakfast was gonna be the next day because I knew I was gonna be tired, about what, how we were gonna change the homeschool day because I knew it wasn't gonna go off as planned. And then I heard John's alarm go off and I knew it was five o'clock and I had stayed up the entire night. And so I was like, well, it's time to make coffee and get on with the day. And I had stayed up the whole night and I was so tired and where it would have been a very trying day, um, I felt like it was instead a really great sanctifying day and such a sweet day. Um, as a nursing mom, I don't get to fast <laughs> um, very often and you know, I've been nursing for a lot of years off and on, but I felt like it was a similar experience with kind of having fasted from sleep um, where I had to really depend on the Lord to make each next right move. I knew that like flesh habits were gonna be coming out in me because I was tired of uh, reactions with the kids. And so I was like, okay, hey, Lord, we're gonna practice not being emotionally driven now um, with all the things you've shown me over the last few weeks. And so I had such a sweet time of just communion with the Lord that day uh, with just focusing on making each next right move and not trying to see the day as a whole. And it was just such a joyful day um, where I really just got to practice, like I said, what the Lord had been showing me. And so that's kind of where I'm at right now, just taking disappointments and asking the Lord what to do instead of taking charge with them, which is a new practice for me. And then along those same lines, the next topic I have is what's encouraging me. Um, so I've been doing the Bible recap. I've done my church's Bible reading plan for a couple of years now, so I wanted to switch it up a little. And I've been doing the Bible recap plan with a friend, which is a chronological reading plan, and then listening to the podcast each day. And that has been so encouraging. So just kind of developing that habit of um, reading their plan in the morning now and then I listen to the podcast at lunchtime just to kind of give me a little pep in my step midday um, That's been so encouraging. We just finished the book of Job recently, which was heavy to walk through um, And I really enjoyed the podcasts. They just kind of gave me new perspectives and um, Instead of just walking away with this like ugh feeling, you know, that you get when you read Job, I actually, she has this thing and they're called the God shot. Like, where did you see God in this? And that really encouraged me each day. Sp 
specifically one day she said something along the lines of like i'd rather or i like to believe that my god is one who will allow me to scream through my swimming lessons because he knows i won't then drown in the ocean and i was like oh that's so good and that just kind of was where i was feeling in this last month with like my own little emotional turmoil of like i don't even know what to do now and and why why are you not breaking this silence god show me what to do and so that helped me like okay we're wrestling through stuff now because you are building um some character here and you're sanctifying me for for later so that was really good um i have a topic here called like babyland like what's going on in babyland postpartum life and i think i kind of covered that with like the working out and the walking she cut her teeth her bottom teeth she's about to get some top teeth any minute now <laughs> um so yeah she loves going on walks right now and we're not sleeping <laughs> so that's where we're at as far as that goes um the other thing i have here i uh, have like a new recipe to talk about but i don't have one from this month because i just have only recently got back into the flow of cooking um, but i have what i'm working on so right now i'm working on an embroidery sampler because i would like to do embroidery with my girls um next year as our handcraft and if you know me then you know that i don't sew it's very frustrating for me so even just learning how to start and end each stitch different stitch was like character building as well um so i'm hoping that by the end of next month's video i can show you that i've at least completed one of the sampler um pieces of fabric so we'll see we'll see at the end of february where i've gotten it'll give me a little challenge and a little um accountability to now that I've told you guys that. So yeah, I've got some other topics I had considered talking about, but I want to hear from you. What do you guys want to hear in these videos each month? What do you want to hear me just kind of chatter on about? Um, and if you guys have any thoughts to share on any of these topics, what's going on in your life in these categories, leave those in the comments down below. I would love to hear um, how you guys are doing in each of these different sort of talk talking points. So I hope you guys have a good day and enjoyed this video. Maybe you got some laundry or dishes done as I chatted away. And I will see you guys soon. Bye, guys.